Hey guys, welcome back to Jackie's Cooking and honey, we back at it again today. Today I'm going to show you how to make some empanada dough. It's so delicious, it's straight to the point, it's economical, and you have those ingredients I bet you right in your cupboard. Alright, so let's get right at it. Okay, so as you can see guys, we have all our ingredients laid out, simple as you can see. Alright, nothing difficult. And here we go. We're going to use three and a half cups of flour, straight to the point. One tablespoon of sugar. Two teaspoons of baking powder. And two teaspoons of salt. Okay, a quarter cup of butter. If you don't have butter, you can use vegetable shortening as well. A slightly beaten egg and three quarter cups of water. Now depending on the way you add, you might need a little bit more or less, but you'll have to fill it out, okay? So now what we're going to do, we are going to take our dry ingredients and we're going to mix them thoroughly, okay? Because you don't want one portion to have more than this and that, no. You want to mix everything thoroughly. I'm going to drink a little bit of tea, guys, because I have a slight cold. I love tea. Okay, then you're gonna take your quarter cup of butter. Again, I told I said you earlier you could use vegetable shortening, butter flavored Crisco, whatever you have lying around. Okay, I'm gonna use my hands for this guys, um, because it's easier. We want to cut the fat into the flour, so I'm just going to cut it with my hands. You can use a stand mixer for this too, okay? But the reason why I wanted to use my hands is some people may not have a stand mixer, and I wanted to show you how easy it was to use without a stand mixer, okay? So you're going to mix this in with your hands until the flour and butter comes together and it's crumbly. Okay. Like I said, this is economical. You know, you don't have to go out to the supermarkets and buy those already prepared discs, which are good. But at the same time, it's easy to even make at home, you know. So you want to get it crumbly just like this. Now we're going to take our one egg and slightly beat it. Okay, we're going to add that to our water. Okay, just uh, mix it with your hands. And you're going to mix and knead this for about three minutes just until that dough starts to come together, okay? And then after that, it's gonna feel somewhat soft on your hands. Do not over knead this, okay? You really don't need to over knead this. You're not trying to make a tough pastry. You don't need to over knead it. See, it's starting to come together slowly but surely. Take a little another sip of my tea here with ginger and lemon. It's really good. Really soothing for the throat. And guys, you can make these in advance, okay? Like, let's say you're going to a party or you have to, you know, cater for a party. 
let's say you have like 50 people that's going to be there or 100, what have you, you can make this dough in advance. Okay, you can make the dough in advance and that will save so much time and money. Believe it or not, again, this is economical, so you'll save so much time and money, okay, because you could make these so simply at your home from scratch, except for spending money buying the discs already made, you could get more for your money, okay, and when it's time to fill them, you could just take the dough out when you have already cut them, which I'm going to show you pretty soon. Let them thaw and start filling away. This was kind of like a stress reliever for me too, in a way. You can eat it right in the bowl. You don't have to take it out and put it on those stuff. You can eat it right in the bowl. That's what I did. Okay, you see that? You just need it a little bit more. You'll have an idea of how it'll feel in your hands, under your hands while you're kneading it. It's not something that you have to overly knead. You just want it to come together and feel, feel a little somewhat soft under your hands. Okay? Shape it just like that. Slap that bad boy right back in the bowl, and you're gonna let it rest. I usually let it rest for a minimum of 30 minutes. Okay, and what you're gonna notice is that it's gonna be soft. Okay. So here's our dough already rested. I'm cutting it in half just so I could make it easier for myself to roll out. Okay. I'm gonna sprinkle a little flour right on top of it, not a lot. A little bit on the board so it won't stick, okay? Okay, and um, a good thing is what you could do is while you're rolling, you could lift it and twist, turn it around, okay? Flip it over. As you can see, I was flipping it over, I was turning the dough around, and the reason why is because I was trying to get it to somewhat of a circle stretch it out as much as possible okay and it keeps the dough from sticking too much to the board okay and using less flour now I'm gonna roll this out to at least an eighth of an inch thick you don't want this you don't want the dough to be thick when you're when you're about to fill it you know you want to roll it out as thin as you can Now, as you can see guys, this is rolled out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a bowl. Straight to the point, you can use the rim of a bowl. If you already have something like a donut cutter, I don't know, anything that's round that you could cut, depending on how big you want them, you can make them cocktail size, 
um, which are really cute, okay? These are so good, okay? And you can make them like appetizers. Um, these empanadas are really, really good, okay? In Haiti, they call them pate corde, okay? So I have family in both Haiti and the Dominican Republic, so I'm giving you a taste of my heritage and my family. And this dough is very forgiving, you know. So after you cut out your silk or whatever you have left over, you can roll it right back up, you know. It's very forgiving. Okay. And after I cut the doughs out into a circle, what I like to do, I like to roll the dough out again. You know, I like to stretch them out a little bit more. Get them a little bigger and flatter. Because when you pop these in the oil, what's going to happen? I know it happens to me. It pops. I don't want it ready. I want it nice and crispy. And soft. So you'll bite into it. It'll have that crispiness. When we first bite into it, but then it'll be nice and soft. Okay, so this is some filling I made the other day, some nice beef filling. And I'm gonna put that on a half a portion of the dough. Okay. And I'm gonna do something a little bit extra with this. I'm gonna add some mozzarella cheese. Now, this is yours. You could do whatever you want to do with it. My husband, he wanted cheese. You know, he wanted that extra umph to it. Didn't you, honey? Yes, I did, baby. And it was very delicious. He's one of my biggest fans. I love him. Okay, now you're going to wet the edges of the dough. Okay, you can use your fingers. Eventually, I would use a brush, uh, a pastry brush, but some of y'all may not have a pastry brush, okay? Okay, so you're gonna wet the edges. And you're going to fold the other half portion over the filling. Okay, and after that you're going to use a fork to crimp them. And now if you want, you can um, there's another way that you could do use to um, seal the edges. It's like a, a swirl. Where you make those swirl, it's like a folding swirl kind of a procedure. I just want it to be straight to the point and simple. As you can see, I'm using my fingers to um, just put them together. The water's going to help seal it. Okay, let's use that fork, as you can see, to just crimp the edges.
okay? So now we're gonna take some oil and we're gonna put them in some nice hot oil. I use canola oil and I like to deep fry them. Okay, and as you can see guys, the minute you put them in that oil, they're going to start floating and you wanna cook them until they're nice and golden brown. Okay? Lightly golden brown, depending on how dark you want them. I would say about a minute, a minute and a half on each side. Flip them over. And you're gonna put them on um, some paper towels so they could um, absorb any excess oil. And there you go. Voila. My husband stole a few. <laughs> This recipe can make at least 10 of these, okay? But it depends on how big you make them. You can make them cocktail size too, but these are so good. Oh my God, you can them for whatever you want, whatever your heart desires. Look at here, honey. Look, look, look. Oh my God, yes. Look at all that cheese. They're really good with cheese, too. That mozzarella, oh my God, with the beef. Mm, mm, mm. Now that's what you call cheesy and beefy. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. And guys, these were absolutely delicious. Simple, straight to the point, economical. Again, you can make the dough in advance. Pull them out whenever you need it. Guys, enjoy.